All right, today we're going to take a look at some basic uh, metal fabrication equipment. Uh, we'll just give you a quick rundown. Uh, this video will probably take uh, uh, 45 minutes to an hour to go over. Uh, hopefully you'll have enough time to watch it from start to beginning. One of the most important things when you're uh, getting into metal fabrication is uh, metal cutting. There are lots of methods to cut metal. Uh, the most common methods that uh, you'll see in a lot of the shops is plasma cutting, uh, water jet cutting, but for most guys at home, uh, most industrial applications, you'll start off with something either nice like a, what they call a foot shear or a stomp shear. Uh, those are a couple of the popular terms, but there are uh, other names like a squaring shear. Uh, all those are named for the same piece of equipment. Uh, we normally call it a foot shear because when you're using the foot shear you have to put your foot up here and then jump down on it which causes the uh, upper blade to pass the lower blade and in turn cut off your material. Um, this one is a 52 inch 16 gauge shear which is our most popular shear. Um, the, really there's not much adjustments to it you bolt your foot pedal on and then you will adjust the bed of your your bed blade to the movable blade you will adjust a gap to that and that will vary depending upon how thick the shear will cut uh, typically it's about a piece of a paper clearance if you're cutting 16 gauge if you're cutting quarter inch steel it's going to be a little wider on some of those big shears but for most foot operated shears you're going to have the enough clearance between the upper and the lower blade to pass by with about the clearance of a piece of paper which is maybe four or five thousandths thick. Again this is called a jump shear or a stomp shear or a foot shear because to make it shear you put your leg up on this pedal and jump up and it, as this goes down so does this upper blade passes over your material and cuts it off square. If you're doing a lot of cutting uh, and you want a nice straight cut this is what you're going to need. Um, like I say, for guys at home, that might be a little uh, pricey and a little big, but for industrial applications and shop applications, it sure is nice to have. A couple of other shears uh, that we use around here, because we do do a lot of uh, fabrication, as you can see from the table on my left, we also uh, use the equipment that we sell. One of the things we use is a little electric shear. We sell these and use them. The one important thing when you're cutting metal is you want to have it uh, clamped or secured so you're not trying to hold on to it with one hand and cut it with another hand. Okay, on this shear, you get it started, push it. Back. Now, the one here, that'll cut 18 gauge material, mild steel. It'll cut uh, a little thinner and stainless uh, and galvanized. And as you can see, that'll make uh, any, almost any type of cut you're looking for. It'll go straight if you want it to. It'll go curvy if you want it to. It'll go an outside radius or not. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, a cat shear. This is a USA made shear. Uh, a little different configuration. As you can see, when you're cutting with this, it takes a swipe out, oh, maybe three sixteenths of an inch wide. Leaves a little curl on the end of it. Uh, if you're cutting like a big sheet, say you have a four foot by ten foot sheet, uh, and you want to cut it down to smaller pieces or trim up a piece, one of these two shears are nice animals to have. They're not very expensive. This uh, import one is, oh, less than fifty dollars. The cat, they have several models of this, and they'll start out at 200 and some of those will go up to 1000 bucks, depending upon how thick you want to cut. Uh, the blade here passes past the two upper blades, and that's what takes out the swipe. On this one, um, it's a little tough getting it started sometimes, uh, but once you get it started... out a swipe just like that and that one will also cut corners or straight all right 
The next thing we're going to take a look at is our 8 inch shear, which is one of our more popular shears. Now this is a mechanical shear, so it's all hand operated, and it'll do you a nice job. Okay? A couple of features about this shear that really makes it nice is, right here, there's a hole that you put your round material in to cut it. Okay? Now, as a safety feature, I like when nobody's around to put a bolt or something through here so, you know, if you have kids or somebody coming by not knowing what's going on, they could put their finger in here and cut it off and you don't want to do that. So, when this thing is not in use, I suggest you put a bolt right in through here and secure it so nobody comes by and accidentally cuts off their finger. Okay? Now, you put a piece of round stock in here and this will take up to about a half inch piece of steel. Cuts it right in two and you're ready to go. Alright, now we're going to take a look at how it cuts some sheet metal. Alright, now the nice thing about uh, this year, it, it'll tell you it'll cut up to about quarter inch uh, steel, but that's only if it's about an inch wide piece. Uh, for all intents and purposes, eighth inch and less is, is pretty good. Uh, it's great for sheet metal, you know, 16 gauge, 22 gauge, something like that would be a nice job. Now the advantage of this shear is it has a straight blade. So if you're wanting to make a straight cut, you're simply going to put your material in. If it's shorter than 8 inches, you're going to pull on that handle, feed it through. Takes off a nice straight edge every time. No matter how long or how wide the piece is, it's got an open throat. One passes above it, one passes below it, and cuts it right off. Here again, this is probably about a 9 inch piece, but I'm going to make two swats. One, it's just like a big pair of scissors, and two. And that will follow a straight line as good as the operator is. Now what we're going to do over here is I'm going to make a radius cut. Okay? Now, when you're making a radius cut, you want to be turning your material while you're pulling on the handle. Okay? That's the key to that. While you're pulling on the handle, turn your material. And see how we have a little bit of radius coming around there where that was a straight edge before? Now if we want to make even more of a radius, we're just going to put that back in there. Like I say, normally we'd be following the line that we had on there. I did not put a line on there, so we're just kind of cutting wherever we want to. And just keep feeding it back in. We have a nice round cut. Like I say, that'll do a straight, that'll do a radius, an outside radius. Um, your round will cut in through here, your flat stock will cut in through here. All this is is a stop so when you're cutting something nice and heavy, it doesn't come up and hit you in the face while you're trying to cut it. Simply pull on the handle, cut the material, and you're done. Next we'll take a look at uh, the stretcher shrinker. All right. uh, now we're going to take a look at our stretcher and shrinker. Uh, this is probably the item we received a lot of calls on, maybe the most. Uh, it's a very basic tool, but a lot of people get confused by it. Uh, one of these is a stretcher, one of them is a shrinker. Uh, the bodies are the same, they're just painted different. doesn't really make any difference to you, which the blue could be the stretcher or the shrinker, doesn't make any difference. The front of the jaw will actually indicate which tool is in the uh, body. Now you can buy this uh, as a complete unit, a stretcher, a shrinker, two handles, and a stand or you can buy it with just the two units without a stand or you can buy it with one housing and two jaw assemblies that you'll change out. Uh, most people buy it uh, either as a complete unit with a stand or just the two units and they make their own stand. An important factor here is for the average person you want from the ground to the bottom of this housing about 24 inches. If you get this much higher than that you lose your leverage as you're working the tool. You want to be able to have the tool like this and work it with your hand without exerting a lot of effort. The higher this gets, the more of your effort you lose and it becomes more difficult to work the tool. Alright, now we're just going to do uh, some stretching and a shrinking. The first thing we would need to do would be to put a piece of metal in the sheet metal brake and do a couple 90 degree bends on it. Uh, on this particular one we have one 90 degree bend. Um, now the width of this material that goes into the jaw 
can be anywhere from about uh, three sixteenths of an inch to about two inches. It'll work best somewhere between oh maybe a half and maybe an inch. Now a lot of people get confused because the depth of the jaw is only an inch but you never use the full depth of the jaw. You only go halfway which is where this little return spring is. You never put your material all the way into the jaw. It, if you do it simply won't work very well. For one it'll be pinched against the face here for two, you're just fighting itself. So when you put your material in to actually stretch or shrink it, only go halfway into that jaw. Now if you're using a piece that's two inches wide and you stretch it and shrink it, it'll get a lot of humps in this area here. Okay, and when it does that, then you'll put it in full depth and just easily push down on the handle. If we could get the camera to go over to this direction a little bit, we'd get a lot better view of this. Okay, now here, we're going to put the material in the jaw, and like I say, it's going to do whatever it tells you it is on the front of that jaw. On this one, looks like it's the stretcher. Now, we don't put it all the way into the jaw. We need a little bit of room between the edge of your material and the jaw so it has some room to work, but never more than halfway, which is where this return spring is. Now, each time I push down on the handle, if this is a shrinker, it pulls the material in. Okay, remember we started off with a straight piece here. Now, if you want a large radius curve, you simply work the piece in a longer angle, a longer arc. If you want a short radius, you'll just go back and forth on that a few times. Okay, and if you're working any harder than what I am right here, you're doing something wrong. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Okay, and you can see it is creating some wrinkles in there, and that's where you'll put it deeper into the jaw, but all you're going to do there is simply flatten out those little wrinkles you put in there. Okay, back and forth, back and forth, so I get me a nice sharp radius. Now this will do about a three inch radius, okay, and it will do a circle if you do it in two pieces. Now there, we simply made, um, I don't know, less than a minute, we made a nice 90 degree bend, okay. That was on the shrinker, which the jaws pulled the material together. Now, simply to stretch with the stand that I've designed, we just flip it around. You do the same thing, but it goes the other direction. The same rules apply here. Never go back past halfway. Always leave a little bit of room between your material and the front of the jaw. That way it has some material or has some room to work. Now, the stretcher works a little slower than the shrinker. Okay, I'm going to make a nice big arch here. Now you would use this, uh, maybe if you're a car guy, you would use this around your wheel well, around your trunk, uh, maybe a custom car around your roof line. Uh, any place you need a nice gradual curve is where you're going to do this. Okay, there again I'm not really working hard and I'm spacing out my uh, stretching so it gives me a nice round arch. The camera's in a little close. If we had a backup view here, we could get a, a better idea. There you go. Now see how you have that nice wide arch? Here we were shrinking, here we're stretching. But now I can do a tight stretch if I want to also. I put my material back in there, and I just work it just like I did the shrinker, work it in a tighter area, then I'll get a tighter radius. And you might go back and forth. Now if you get a stress crack in this, all you have to do is put it in the other housing and back it up and it'll push that crack right back together and you'll never know what happened. All right? There. A very nice piece there. Now I'm going to show you maybe like if you were doing a door jam or something like that. It'd be nice to see the piece again. Okay? There you go. Like I say, you control that radius by how many times you put your material in and out of there. All right, now we'll take a look at the door jam. Now here's a piece that I've already put on the brake, and you can see I've done two opposite 90s here. They're going opposite directions. So when you're using this piece, you need to use both of these. Uh, you'll do a few, turn it around, do the other, turn it around, do the other, and just go back and forth, okay? doesn't really matter which one you start off with, as long as you don't get one too far ahead of the other. Alright? I'm going to do four or five here. And you 
can see it's starting to take shape, but I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the other on the other side. All right. Just give this a nice little pump so I can get it, get a good edge going on here. Now this is where you would use, like if it rusts out in the old car, um, it's not a cab corner, it's more like a door jam. It always rusts out there in the bottom. Those old Chevys were pretty bad about that. The Ford's got pretty wicked on it too there for a while. Okay. And then I go back to the other side. This is where the, our stand comes in handy. All you have to do is just move your, uh, the heads around. You don't have to move yourself. You don't have to walk around the other side, anything like that. You simply work the piece. Like I say, the most important thing on this piece is do not get one side way ahead of the other. It'll give you a little nasty warp there, and then you have to go back and flip it into the other one and bring it back into line a little bit. Uh, but like I say, this is not a precision piece of equipment. And maybe you'll have to work a couple edges uh, right next to each other to get this to come out right to fit your car. Or you may have another application for this. There you see a nice piece. See how that curves around there? This would be what would go in your door jam. So your car would slide right up, your door would slide right up against that. Have a nice tight seal again. No rust holes in there. Okay. Next we'll take a look at some sheet metal brakes. Okay, before we take a look at our sheet metal brakes, we're going to take a finish up here on the stretcher shrinker. Uh, one thing you need to know about the stretcher shrinker is the maintenance of these. Um, again, just as a quick reminder, never put your material, when you're working it, back more than halfway, which is where this return spring is. Um, that will give you the best results. Now, here there are some torque screws that hold in the jaw assembly. I've already taken one of them out just to save a little bit of time but what you're going to do is to service these you're going to put your uh, screwdriver in here your torx bit you're going to loosen those screws up so you can slide that jaw assembly out so it can fall on the ground you're going to pick that up now there is a special way these blocks go in here it's kind of hard to see unless I zoom in but there's a angle here and an angle here on this block. Okay. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. But where this corner is notched out, that has to go to the front of the housing, where the housing is a little round. Otherwise it won't fit very well. Okay. Now to remove this jaw assembly, you pull up on this and you pull out your shrinker jaw or your stretcher jaw a little bit of oil in here you wipe these jaws clean with a wire brush and then you put them back in Okay. you'll do that and then the next time you clean those you'll rotate the front to the back and the back to the front so it's kinda like a set of tires that will ride in all four positions alright do the same thing with the upper They'll come out like this, you'll wire brush them, you'll go back in like this, but the block, remember the block has to go in the same exact way with those notches facing to the front. Okay, now we'll take a look at the stretcher jaw. Okay, each time we push down on this, see how those come apart? That means it's stretching the material. You do the same thing, it just does the opposite. Okay, you're going to pull your jaw assembly apart, you're going to pull the lower part out, you're going to clean it with the wire brush, you're going to flip it over, you're going to put it right back in. A little bit of 3-in-1 oil on there works wonders. You do the same thing with the upper. You wire brush the little shavings out of the teeth, you flip it over, you put it back in. Remember, your blocks with the little notches out of the corner always go to the front of the housing. That's the same way on the stretcher as it is on the shrinker. You can see here's the two jaw assemblies. Uh, when you remove them, and it doesn't make any difference what housing it's in, they're just different colors. That's all it is. One's a stretcher, one's a shrinker. All right? And it'll label those on the front. Next, we'll take a look at the brake. All right, now we're going to take a look.